everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to make this pullover with a hood for children up to 10 years old. And I do have the measurements for up to 10 years old uh, today. So this is the one that I made for my daughter and this is the size 8 to 10 years. So if you want to make the same size, you can follow the chart that I am going to give you. Okay. So the pullover is very, very warm. It is quite uh, a thick pattern. Uh, it is very, very stretchy, but the good thing is that once you stretch it, it always come back to its uh, usual place. It just kind of goes right back in. So you will have a choice of making it a short pullover like this one. So my daughter asked because it's very fashionable or trendy at the moment. So this is a short one. As you can see, it's not a whole lot from underneath the armhole. And you can see how much longer the sleeves are. Okay, but it fits absolutely perfect. You can easily make it long if you want to. Again, I have that all on my charts. Okay. So to make this, you need to know what a front post and the back post is and uh, how to make puff stitches. I will show you that, but it's always easier if you're ready and you kind of know uh, what I'm talking about, okay? So we have two strings at the bottom right here to make it nice and snug if we need to. We have two strings around the hood like this and we have a bit of a neckline on the inside of the hood so you can see right here it, it is really nice and snug around the child's neck uh, and it, I made that because I wanted it to be super warm and it looks absolutely amazing when they have the hood down you can see it comes out looking like this okay so we will be using a uh, DK weight or lightweight uh, yarn any kind that you have is going to be absolutely perfect because we will be using measurements. Um, the counting the rows or the stitches does not matter. I have that whole thing uh, sorted out. So, like I said, this is 8 to 10 years old size. And I have made one for my son. It is exactly the same, except for it is size 6 to 8 years old. He is actually 7. The same strings, uh, uh, absolutely everything the same, except for the part where... It is longer, so you can see if you see uh, if you put the sleeves uh, right next to the hem, uh, the sleeves are just a little bit uh, longer rather than where my daughter's was much much shorter. Okay, so I do personally believe that uh, this is a unisex uh, pattern. Whatever you uh, you want it for a boy for a girl, I think it works absolutely fine. Again, everything exactly the same. I have the little neckline inside. You can actually make this longer if you want to. And it looks really, really nice and super soft. Okay? So, like this. Okay, so if you got interested into making one of these um, for somebody you know, uh, let's go and start part one. So to make this pullover, you are going to need scissors, needle, four stitch markers, a measuring tape in centimeters. Now this is very important because if you want to make a different size, you're going to have to uh, be sure that you can measure to make the, a different size. Okay, so and I will give you my chart and there will be all the measurements that you need in there which are in centimeters. So measuring tape is very, very important. Now the next thing that I have are these uh, little ends. This is for the string. Let me show you. These are the strings that I have and just to close them at the very bottom. So I have these in red. Uh, now if you don't have these, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You can always make just a little knot at the end or even um, put a, a bead or something like that at the end. Perhaps you have something like this. So anything that you have will be okay. If you don't have, you can just leave a little knot so it does not come out. So I have four in color red. Now the next thing that we're going to look is the hook. So we're going to be using a four millimeter hook and the yarn. So this is a lightweight number free yarn it's uh, these are 50 gram 
skeins uh, and there is 150 meters in one of these skeins so a 100 gram skein would have 300 meters so this is very very um, your very normal DK yarn okay so how much yarn we're going to need we're going to need approximately 400 grams now as I have only made the two bigger sizes I have 8 to 10 years and six to eight years so six to eight years 400 grams so so like this was enough but I had a very very little left okay if I needed an extra row I'd, I wouldn't have had enough to make that now for eight to ten years as well I had uh, um, 400 grams was enough but have in mind that this cardigan that I made in that size is short okay it just kind of goes just lower uh, than the waist. So if you wanted this bigger, bigger size to be a long cardigan, you're going to need an extra 50 grams. So 450 grams uh, should really be enough. Now, uh, I just presume that any of these sizes that are smaller than this, 400 grams will be enough. Perhaps one to two years, 350 will be enough. Okay, so my yarn that I'm going to use is uh, classic acrylic yarn, we love yarn. So this is from Hobie. Okay, you don't have to use the same yarn. You can use any kind of lightweight uh, yarn or DK yarn that you have. Absolutely no problem with that. Okay, so I'm just, I just have this and it's a lovely color. So I will be using the, it this time okay so once you have everything ready let's go and have a look uh, how to start our pullover okay so grab your hook your yarn measuring tape and four stitch markers so first of all we will start with uh, head circumference okay we need to know how long our starting chain should be for it to go over the child's head so I will be making three to four years size this time okay and the head circumference is 50 centimeters long. So I need my starting chain to be 50 centimeters, a little stretched or a little bit bigger, not smaller, okay, because it does have to go over the head. So find the size that you are going to make and see what is the head circumference for that age. So for me, it is 50 centimeters. Now, right here I have the starting chain uh, so 56 chains 64 chains 68 76 or 84 so we will be uh, making our starting chain and we will be measuring it in length and which one of these number of chains will be uh, fitting us for the length of the head circumference okay so I'm gonna show you if somebody doesn't understand so make a slip knot and start chaining so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and now I will keep chaining until I have 56 chains okay so I have chained 56 now I'm going to measure if that is approximately 50 centimeters long so I'm gonna put my hook with the last chain on the very top of the uh, measuring tape and I will just give it a little pull so I'm at approximately 40 centimeters in length I need this to be 50 so 56 chains is not enough for me I'm gonna go for 64 so oops sorry so 56 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63 and 64 so this one right here. I'm going to measure this ag uh, again. And I'm just going to give it a little pull. So I'm at approximately 46 centimeters. I'm just a little short. So I can pull it more, but I don't want it to be pulled too much. Just a little bit. So a little short. So I'm going to go for 68. So I need to add four more chains. One, two, three, and four. And again, I'm going to measure that. And with a little pull, I'm easily at 50 centimeters in 
length like that okay not too much pull just a little bit uh, to stretch it out so that is absolutely perfect I'm gonna stay at 68 chains uh, if that is not long enough for you just keep chaining so 76 or 84 until you find that number of chain that will easily go around the child's head and if it looks really long do not worry we are going to have the the little neck inside there which we are going to decrease a little bit so it will look absolutely fine okay now once you know the number of chains okay so then you will be looking at that little square that has the number of chains in it okay so I had 68 so I will be looking at the numbers around this square if you have 76 you will be looking at yours or whichever one so to start the foundation row we are going to add one extra chain so I'm gonna just chain one we're gonna skip that very last chain and to the second chain from the hook we're gonna start our single crochet so one single crochet into each chain so this is one into the next one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten keep going you should have this number of single crochets that is in the middle of your square so I should have 68 single crochets and so I have my 68 single crochets and now we need to join it so make sure that your first row is not twisted okay so I just take it like this and then connect it to the very very first stitch so right here a slip stitch now to start repeat row number one we're going to chain two one two and we're going to turn okay so first of all chain two counts as our very first stitch so that is one we need to make this number of double crochets okay so the one that you have on the top whichever square that you're making so I have 21 so chain two counts as my first one then we're gonna go into the next stitch now make sure you don't use the stitch right underneath the chain two you go right into the next one so that is two into the next one three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Now, you can see the little number one right here. This is a corner, so we have one stitch for each corner. So into the corner, so into the next stitch, after you have this number of stitches, you make three double crochets. So into the next stitch, one, two, and three. Now grab your stitch marker <coughs> and mark your stitch number two from the hook. So this is the first stitch, this is the second one. Put a stitch marker in there. Next step is our shoulder, so I have 11 double crochets I start counting from the very next stitch so one two three and keep going until you have this number of stitches okay so you don't count those three that we have made in the corner okay so corner is on its own so you start after the corner I have three need eleven 
I have my 11 made. I have my next corner. Into the next stitch I make three double crochets. One, two, and three. Grab a stitch marker and place it in the second stitch from the hook. So one and two. The loop on the hook does not count as a stitch. So like this. Okay, then we are in the front part of the cardigan and again I have 21 double crochets. I start counting from the next stitch. So one, two, three, four, and I keep going until I have 21 double crochets. I have my 21 double crochets, my third corner into the next stitch, three double crochets. One, two, and three. Stitch marker into the second stitch from the hook. So one and two, right here. And we have the last piece left, so this side right here. And again, I have 11 double crochets. Starting from the next stitch, I start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. Okay, so we have one more stitch left for our last and fourth corner. Now you might think that you have two stitches left because it looks like that, but if you look really close, that second stitch, you have the chain two coming out of it, so it's already used. Okay, so this is your last stitch, and you make three double crochets in there one, two, and three. Stitch marker in the second stitch from the hook. Now we're going to join this row. So this is the chain two that we have started with into the top of the chain. So into the second chain like this right into the chain and slip stitch. Okay, so we are done here with the first row. Okay, so for now you can have a better look if you need it. Uh, this will be on my Facebook page if you need a better look. I will leave a link in the uh, description box so you can find it. Okay, so we do not need this anymore. We have all of our stitches right here. Okay, so to start repeat row number two we are going to chain two and turn. Okay, so this is where we are going to start our front post puff stitches. Okay, so around the next double crochet that you have, so you should have one before the stitch marker. So that one right here, we are going to yarn over, go start making a front post, okay, like this. Grab your yarn, pull it out and stop. Yarn over, go underneath again, grab your yarn, pull out and stop. So you should have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through four loops. When you have two loops left, yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Now uh, you might have to try this a couple of times, okay? but this is how it's going to be done. Now, where we have our stitch markers, we are going to make three double crochets. I'm going to take this out and put three double crochets in that stitch. One, two, and three. Stitch marker in the second stitch from the hook, right here. Now, puff stitch 
front post puff stitch again now you need to find the very next double crochet that is right here right after you're gonna yarn over start your front post puff stitch we pull it out yarn over go underneath and out pull out you have five loops on your hook yarn over pull through four loops and pull through the last two loops then into the next double crochet we make a double crochet into the stitch on top okay then a front post puff stitch again so yarn over go under and out yarn over pull pull out that loop yarn over again underneath and out pull out you have five loops on your hook yarn over pull through four yarn over pull through the last two loops the next stitch is a double crochet into the stitch so once you make your uh, puff stitches make sure that you skip that stitch on the other side it's actually I think it's quite uh, easy to see where you need to do your stitches so again this is going to be a front post puff stitch yarn over go under and out yarn over pull it out high yarn over and again pull through four loops and pull through two loops double crochet into the next stitch yarn over front post puff stitch yarn over pull through four loops yarn over pull through two loops double crochet into the next stitch front post so we will be working with these two stitches front post puff stitch and a double crochet double crochet now you should always have a puff stitch when you have one stitch left before the stitch marker okay so like that okay then with the stitch marker is three double crochets one two and three stitch marker into the second stitch from the hook and then again you are gonna find the next double crochet so which is right here we can see the stitch from the double crochet and the double crochet underneath and you will start with a puff stitch front post puff stitch around that double crochet and then double crochet into the next stitch front post puff stitch now the only thing that you need to make sure uh, when you're making those uh, front post puff stitches is that um, once you have to pull the yarn through that you pull through four loops first and then that you pull through two loops okay so you might be used to pulling through all of the loops well, I lost my stitch marker uh, now that would be a problem because the double crochets uh, in between the puff stitches would be higher than the puff stitch itself okay and then it would be pulling down the puff stitches would be pulling down on the double crochets so we need to pull uh, through the puff stitch two times it's very important okay and so you keep going until you get to your next stitch marker just switching around these two stitches double crochet and a front post puff stitch so I'm going to show you one more corner when I get here I am right at the stitch marker I'm going to take that out and three double crochets in the stitch that was marked one two and three stitch marker back into the second stitch from the hook 
and then you start with a puff stitch again find the next double crochet after you make the corner which is right here you see the stitch and the double crochet and a front post puff stitch double crochet into the next one and keep going okay so you're gonna do exactly the same in this corner and I'm gonna see you right here where we have to connect okay so this is the very end this is my chain 2 and I have one more stitch left okay right here so your very last one should be a puff stitch a front post puff stitch before the chain 2 like this okay the chain 2 is going to be in between the two puff stitches and that's why it becomes unnoticeable okay and then you're gonna find the second chain so first second into that chain and slip stitch like this okay we're gonna start our repeat row number one again this is the easy one this is the one with double crochets so you start with chaining two and turn now we're gonna start making our double crochets so find your next stitch which is right here okay you don't touch this or this this is from the chain two and the slip stitch you look for your next stitch which which is to the uh, left and you start your double crochets one double crochet into each stitch until you get to your stitch marker stitch uh, stitch marker out and that stitch gets three double crochets so until we are making our yoke where our stitch marker is we will always make three double crochets and mark stitch number two from the hook like this and then continue on with one double crochet into each stitch and the same with all the stitch markers three double crochets in there okay so this is repeat row number one again one double crochet three double crochets where the stitch marker is and then one and three one and I'm gonna see you right here okay so this is my last corner and I'm gonna pull the stitch marker out three double crochets Okay, stitch marker into the second stitch from the hook and now we are going to finish the last stitches okay so right here and the other one right here okay and then it's just the chain two so you can see you don't have any more stitches now these uh, again I'm gonna show you that these might look like two little stitches uh, on top of the chain two underneath excuse me okay but this is just a slip stitch and the stitch from the previous row so you do not touch them that belongs to the chain two okay and then you just slip stitch into the top of the chain two chain two again and turn and it is again the repeat row number two and you start with a front post puff stitch around the next double crochet that you have so yarn over around pull yarn over around pull yarn over pull through four yarn over pull through two and then a double crochet into the next stitch and again like I have mentioned the double crochet before the stitch marker will always be a front post puff stitch this is just something that you can uh, make sure that you are on point with the number of stitches okay so if you end up with a front post right here before the stitch marker you're absolutely fine stitch marker out and three double crochets in the stitch that was marked one two and three stitch marker into the second stitch from the hook 
and then again after you make your corner you start with the front post bust stitch around the next double crochet so right underneath it okay so you can see right here and double crochet so these are the two um, the two repeat rows that we are going to repeat until our yoke is wide enough to go around the child's um, chest okay so you will have to make quite a few a few of these rows okay so you just continue on the main thing to remember is right here that the stitch before the stitch marker is going to be the front post puff stitch then three double crochets and then after the three double crochets in the corner stitch you start with the front post puff stitch and you just keep making this okay so you're gonna have this stitch all the way around so now I'm gonna stop right here uh, I think that the, this is not very difficult okay so just for those who have not made a lot of cardigans uh, so you will always start at the same place right here at the chain two and the stitch marker is going to get further and further we started with a stitch marker right at that chain two so don't worry it's okay because we're making the three double crochets in the corners it is expanding we're getting more and more stitches so so it it gets a bit more square so it keeps that shape so do not worry about any of this just keep going I'll see you in a few seconds when I have uh, um, much more made and we can see how long we need to do it for okay so at this point I'm ready to connect my yoke now how did I get here I kept making these two repeat rows until this got to the chest measurement okay I will show uh, show it and explain it all in a second now the important thing is when you measure for the chest measurement that you have just finished the puff uh, the front post puff stitch row okay so that we are all on the same row now that will just make it easier for the sleeves and for the rest of the cardigan okay that we are on the same row now so I have made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is 14 repeat rows. Okay. And like I said, I have finished on the front post puff stitch row. Now we want to measure from one stitch marker to another, the long side. Okay. So these are the sleeves. This is the shorter side and this is the long side. And you have the same at the bottom uh, now if you are not sure about uh, the stitches okay so that is uh, I'm, t I'm, I'm talking to the beginners right here what you can do is you ha you can count the stitches in the front right here and in, in the back right here they, you have to have the same amount of stitches and the same with the sleeves okay from stitch marker to stitch marker on both sides you're gonna have the same amount of stitches and it will be an odd number okay I should have probably mentioned that a little before but hopefully uh, you didn't wait until I finish here and you're watching so odd number odd number and odd number everywhere okay so and they have to be the same the front and the back and both sleeves just in case you're not sure if you lost a stitch or something okay so let's have a look so for the chest measurement so chest finished this line right here so you're gonna find the size that you're making so for me it's three to four years and this is so 62 centimeters is the full cardigan circumference around okay as it is not connected we're only going to measure for the half so the smaller number at the bottom so 31 centimeters for me okay so this is the full as it's not connecting we can't measure that uh, we measure just a half so get your measuring tape now it doesn't really make a difference which one you measure the front or the back as long as it's not the sleeves because they should be exactly the same and you want to measure from one stitch marker to another just give me a second probably should be like this try uh, that's a, one more thing try not to stretch it 
so from one stitch marker to another I'm just about 32 centimeters so I'm a bit bigger than uh, on my notes right here absolutely no problem it is a pullover the one thing you, that you don't want to do is you don't want to have it less than that measurement more is absolutely fine less uh, not very good now one more uh, thing that I'm gonna say once you measure and it is the length that you need this to be just leave it standing for a few minutes okay just go get yourself a coffee or something now the thing is now because we measure we usually measure after we just finish the row we kind of from handling it we stretch it out okay but if you leave it on a smooth surface for a few minutes it will kind of fall into places and it will shrink a little bit okay so after shrinking you want to measure again and if it shrank way too much you might wanna do two more rows okay just to add another one because it is just the specifics of this stitch and this is the good thing especially for a pullover now the one that I have for my uh, son uh, once when I put it on his his hands are going different ways and he's really stretching it out but once you put it on it just kind of falls back into the place so that's what you want okay just give it a few minutes and it will shrink a bit and then measure again okay now I am at that point where I have rested my uh, cardigan and I'm pretty sure that this is enough for me we can start joining so joining uh, I'm gonna take that away if you need to have a look here you go uh, joining is very very simple we're just gonna start in our usual place right here we're gonna chain two and turn and we will make one double crochet into each stitch until we get to our stitch marker now it's gonna get easier now because we will not have to do any corners again so we will just be going one way or another uh, no more increases no more uh, stitch markers okay so keep going with double crochets to the stitch marker so I am at my stitch marker I'm just gonna make one double crochet where into the stitch where the stitch marker is oh, I didn't finish that now we're going to chain one we're gonna skip all this this is going to be the sleeves and make sure that you're skipping uh, the correct side okay so we're just joining the two long sides and skipping the two shorter ones okay so chain one and in, double crochet right into the next stitch marker into the stitch where the stitch marker is okay so this is our sleeve and then you can continue on with one double crochet into each stitch until you get to the next stitch marker to keep going I'll see you right here okay so next stitch marker again double crochet chain one skip the sleeve and a double crochet right into the stitch with a, another stitch marker and then just finish with one double crochet into each stitch and our cardigan is connected okay and my last stitch slip stitch into the top of the chain two then chain two and turn now we're gonna start our uh, front post uh, puff stitch so yarn over so I'm sure that you know how to do this now so just keep going and we will see what we're going to do with the chain one that we have okay so keep going I'll see you at the chain one okay so I'm right here so if you look closely so this is a puff stitch 
double crochet and there should be a puff stitch right here around this double crochet but we cannot make a puff stitch right here because we will need to use this double crochet for uh, making the sleeve okay there will have to be stitches in there so if you have a puff stitch it's gonna be uh, really hard to do that so instead of doing a puff stitch we're just going to make a double crochet on top of that so you have two double crochets one after another then this the chain one we make a double crochet there and into the next stitch into the first double crochet on the other side of the sleeve again we make the double crochet because there should be um, normally a puff stitch okay and into the next one double crochet so you have one two three four five double crochets in a row okay so instead of a puff stitch we make a double crochet a double crochet in the chain one so there should be a puff puff stitch we make a double crochet again so it it wouldn't um, be in our way when we do need to do the sleeve and another du double crochet into the next stitch after that we start with a puff stitch front post puff stitch and it should be around the third double crochet from the sleeve and then you continue on uh, swapping around these two stitches again I'm gonna come back and show you the same thing on the other uh, sleeve okay just in case so keep going I'll see you right here so the other side of the armhole right here again so the last two double crochets before the chain one is just double crochets double double crochet double crochet into the chain one underneath the armhole and one double crochet into the two stitches right after the armhole so again you have five double crochets in a row without the pattern underneath the armhole after that you continue with a front post puff stitch and keep going until you finish this row So I'm finishing this row. I have one double crochet left and the last one is a front post puff stitch. And slip stitch into the top of the chain two. After that you chain two and turn. And the next row is just double crochet. So one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Okay? So do it, uh, finish this row. <clears throat> just one double crochet into each of these as well and I will see you in the next row and we will see how to bring these five double crochets into our pattern so finish the double crochets and we will start the puff stitch row together okay so I'm finishing this row my second last stitch and my very last one okay I'm hoping that you are not having problems to find that last stitch just make sure it is not in the chain two there okay so it should be above right above your puff stitch the last double crochet okay so we connect chain two and we are going to start our uh, puff stitch row so repeat row number two so in the beginning it is easy We just want to bring those five double crochets into work, into the pattern. And again, this is most likely just for the beginners that wouldn't, that might not be able to know how it's done. Okay? Nothing really difficult, but just something um, I should probably show okay so I'm getting close so this is so you can see these were five these were without the pattern 
all you do is just continue with the pattern as usual and sh it should come out just fine and I will show you how to check if the pattern is in place okay so once once you can see the puff stitch underneath okay and you should have a puff stitch on the double crochet a little to the right of it okay so this is the puff stitch here and this double crochet is a little bit to the right side there's one to the left and one a little to the right so you should always have a puff stitch in there okay so any stitch that you look there's a puff stitch there should be a puff stitch a little to the right on top of it okay so that's how you check if your pattern is in place it really should be because uh, I did show you how to do um, how many stitches and where you, you should have but this is just in case if you want to check that you have the puff stitches uh, or the front post puff stitches in the correct uh, on top of the correct um, double crochets okay and that is it this row obviously doesn't have any pattern right here but it's okay it's gonna be covered by the sleeve and then you finish this row start the next one and you keep going okay so the same on the other side okay just keep going puff stitch double crochet puff stitch double crochet and so on now at this point we only need to get the length of the cardigan which we are going to talk about right now okay so the length so we will be measuring from the top of the shoulder down to hem right here okay so this is the length of the cardigan so the one the length that I have is right here for each age so this cardigan is a six to eight years approximately there and should be approximately 43 centimeters in length so you, when you measure make sure that you don't measure from the very very top you kind of want to go underneath the very first puff stitch because it is just uh, lying on top and as you can see oh I can fit it in it's a uh, 43 centimeters in length now you don't want to make it any shorter uh, than uh, than this okay because it will be really short um, of course uh, unless you want the uh, kind of cropped cardigan okay but like for boys uh, you want to be at that measurement or longer not any shorter than that okay so this is the length so let's see the, for the one that I'm making right now okay I'm gonna put it nicely so for three to four years it should be approximately 37 centimeters or a little bit longer okay because I'm making a full length so again I'm just gonna go underneath the top puff stitch and I'm at approximately I'm at approximately 23 centimeters in length so it I want it to be 37 in total okay so now the thing so we are going to have quite quite a wide band at the bottom okay and that is my plan so my bands that I make are approximately six centimeters wide like this okay so this is approximately six centimeters now you can make it smaller or bigger depending on what you like I'm gonna make the exact same one and that is seven rows of ribbing right here not counting the single crochet row okay so like I said um, whatever you want it to be so from the 37 centimeters that I need in full length or longer I'm gonna leave the last six for the band okay it might end up being a little bit lower but this is my plan for now so this is where my band is going to be all the way up to this length I just keep making these two rows okay and then I will jump in to make the band so just leave the last five six or seven centimeters whatever you like this to be um, for the band at the bottom for the ribbing now this is the full length now if you want the cropped over like this one okay and it's really short and you can see that this is what you have to do okay so you are going to measure the same only you're gonna measure down to waist 
okay so this measurement right here so at this point three to four years would be 24 centimeters so you would probably be making up to here or a little bit longer and then the band okay so the same only much shorter you kind of want to go down to the waist and then make the band so it's just going to be a short one hopefully that makes sense I will show you once I have the length made uh, I will come back and just show you the measurements again okay so at this point I'm ready to start my uh, band at the bottom and it measures approximately 31 centimeters in length so I'm gonna have another six or even more uh, for the band at the bottom okay so if you feel that you want to go lower down with the pattern uh, you can or leave it the rest of it for the band whatever you want to do okay so when you're ready to start the band uh, we're just going to make one row of single crochets and we're gonna do a little bit of decreasing so we are going to make 10 single crochets and then we're going to skip stitch number 11 so starting from the next stitch so this is one single crochet two three four five six seven eight nine ten I'm gonna skip a stitch into the next one I start again one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten skip one and again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten skip one and so on until you get all the way around the cardigan now this will not decrease uh, a whole lot but it will look nicer um, when we start the band okay so keep going I'll see you at the end of this row so I have uh, a few stitches left I actually have three stitches left and this is where I end up skipping uh, my uh, one more stitch and I just finish with one and two it doesn't really matter how many decreases you had uh, really doesn't matter okay so then slip stitch into the very first stitch chain two and turn now the next row is very simple we are just going to make double crochet so yarn over starting from the next stitch so don't use the same stitch as the chain two right into the next one and double crochet all the way around just like that keep going I'll see you at the end of this row okay so I just finished my double crochets and it looks I have one more stitch but if you look close the chain 2 is coming out of so I'm not going to touch it uh, slip stitch into the top of the chain 2 chain 2 and turn and we are now going to start our uh, repeat row 1 so it's very similar to what we have done uh, before only it's not a puff stitch but it's just a front post double crochet so yarn over go around the first double crochet that you have from the previous row and make a double crochet so front post double crochet then in the next stitch we make a half double crochet in the stitch and then yarn over skip that double crochet that has the half double on top into the ne around the next one front post double crochet and then again half double crochet in the next stitch front post double crochet around the next double crochet okay so you kind of have to have um, half double crochets in between your front posts and one double crochet in between them okay so keep going so half double crochet 
and front post double crochet half double crochet and front post double crochet keep going I will see you at the end of this row okay so I'm finishing this row and I have a few stitches left so this is front post half double crochet and you want to finish it with the front post double crochet now because we have not um, uh, counted our stitches you might have an extra uh, stitch there which will make you end up with a half double crochet and the chain two just like this okay so let's pretend that this is a front post right here so what you want to do you actually do want to finish with a front post so you can go around the chain two that you have from the previous row and just make that into a front post double crochet and connect into the chain two now I promise you will not be able to see any of this once we have the little string in there this will be nice and snug and this will not be noticeable but for me my stitch count is perfect so I'm just gonna finish with a front post double crochet connect into the chain two chain two and we're gonna start uh, repeat row two for the band turn around and now this is very similar apart uh, from the fact that we will be making back post double crochets so where we had the front post we're just gonna make back post double crochets around them and then the half double crochets get a half double crochet on top and then the back post double crochet and then the half double crochet and then the back post double crochet and then the half double crochet now if you're not uh, quite sure which stitch you, you should make your half double crochets in just when you see a half double crochet the stitch from from that half double crochet is to the left of it okay so this is the stitch from that half double crochet and you want to make half double crochet in that then the back post and so on all the way around and you should finish this row with a back post double crochet slip stitch into the top of the chain two chain two and turn and you start repeat row one of the band again so it's with front post double crochets and the, then you just keep following or repeating these two rows until you reach the length of the cardigan or until you're happy with it okay so I will be making so I made including that double crochet row so this is one two I just finished third row I started four I want at least six or seven rows so I want this to be quite wide so keep going until you're happy with the band with the length of it or until it measures to the full length okay so I made six rows right here including with the double crochet row and I'm happy with what it looks it will look a little different when we have the little string in there for now it's just like that and if I measure it is approximately <coughs> even 38 centimeters in length and if we look like right here 37 was approximately the length that I needed okay so the next part is we are going to do the neckline first of all uh, grab a needle and scissors and we shall finish right here because we have connected the single crochets but we have never connected the chains we have this little gap so what you want to do is you want we want to stitch it together so just like that and stitch back and that's it it's all connected I'll make a little knot and catch that go in and pull tight and I'll just hide it a little in between those single crochets okay happy with that now
Okay, so if you have a preference uh, for what you want, where you want to have your front, it really doesn't matter at the moment. I'm just going to connect uh, on one of the shoulders, either one of them. So just make a slip knot. And we will use the chains that were left from the single crochets, okay? So we made single crochets, but we you should have at least uh, one left above it, okay? So we will be crocheting into these. So connect, chain one, and we're gonna start our single crochets. Now we will do a little bit of decreasing, so we will make four single crochets and we will skip stitch number five. So back into that same stitch. This is one into the next one. Two into the next one. Three next. Four and we will skip number five. So I should put a single crochet so I'm just going to skip over that right into the next one. And again one, two, so this is where my little knot is. I have to be careful there. Three. And. And four. So again, this is where the knot is. It might be a little bit difficult to get in there. Oh, like this. Four. Skip the next one. One. Two three and four. Skip the fifth one. One, two, three, four. Skip one. And keep going until you come back to where you have started. Okay, so I'm finishing up and I have my last stitch right here and I have four in a row so I don't have anywhere else to skip so I'm just gonna leave it at that and connect into the very first stitch. Now it's always a good idea to check if this is not too tight and the head will still go through so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna look at the head circumference right here so it is 50 centimeters for three to four years I'm gonna divide that into two so 25 centimeters I'm gonna get a measuring tape and I'm just gonna see if that actually stretches to 25 so easy you see I have one more 26 even 27 if I need to okay so the head will definitely <clears throat> excuse me go through uh, next thing and don't be don't worry you can give it a, a good pull Okay, you are not going to stretch those single crochets, it's just the uh, chains underneath it th that might be giving you um, the hard time to pull, okay? So, next, it's pretty much similar, well, pretty much the same as we did right here. So, we're going to chain two and turn and we will start with double crochets. So, one double crochet into each stitch. And like that, all the way around the neckline. Once you finish your double crochet row, it's repeat row one uh, from the band underneath. So you chain two and start with front post double crochets and half double crochets. Front post double crochet and half double crochet front post and so on all the way around and again you want to finish with a front post double crochet now if you have a half double crochet you can do the front post around the chain two right here or you know just make sure that it looks nice again uh, if you're going to have the hood that is that side is going to be completely under the hood so you won't be able to see you connect into the top of the chain two. You can leave it like this or you can add another row or two. I will do one more. So I'm gonna chain two and turn and repeat row two from the band. 
back post double crochet a half double crochet and like this all the way around the neckline and so I have finished and slip stitch chain one and I'm happy with this length you can add more if you like then just going to leave it at that cut your yarn and pull out your hook so this is how it looks like like I said it you can do it longer uh, now I'll give you a reason why I, I don't uh, want that because it's gonna have a hood on top and it just becomes a lot of things once you want to take it off okay and now if you're thinking to leave the hood off and you just want a like a turtleneck or to have a high neck right here just keep going absolutely no problem but I'm gonna leave it at this and as you can see it's really nice and stretchy so it's definitely the head is definitely going to go through it okay so this is where I will be finishing my uh, first part and uh, the only thing that I want to do is to hide my tails to show you how I would do that so we can start part two and all of this here is finished so I'm just gonna go in between the stitches like this and back and the same at the neckline you might have some um, inside so you might want to hide them as well I already did that I only have the ones around the neckline now if you are not quite sure about the neckline uh, I would suggest you leave it until you can uh, try it on somebody uh, but I am absolutely happy with it I'm, pr I'm absolutely sure that this will fit around the child's head so I'm just gonna hide those tails and just like that I am done well, thank you very much for watching part one uh, I will see you very very soon in part two bye